Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for staying with us on TCM as we wind down a snow day, part of our month-long spotlight on weather in the movies. We opened with Alaskan snow and Charlie Chaplin's The Gold Rush, followed by Omar Sharif and Julie Christie enduring Russian winners and Dr. Zhivago. Up next, Christie is back six years later, this time opposite Warren Beatty, in a revisionist western with a pivotal snow sequence set in the Pacific Northwest at the turn of the 20th century. From director Robert Altman in 1971, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Beatty is John McCabe, a gambler and would-be entrepreneur who shows up in a northwestern mining town known as Presbyterian Church. He plans to open a brothel, quickly forming a business partnership with a prostitute, the Mrs. Miller of the title. That's Julie Christie delivering an Oscar-nominated performance. With McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Robert Altman was eager to move away from the tropes so prevalent in most movie westerns. These characters speak in the accents of wherever they came from. Moreover, they regularly speak at the same time, showcasing the overlapping dialogue that became a hallmark of a Robert Altman picture. Altman also worked with cinematographer Vilmo Sigmund to get the grainy, unromantic look you're about to see, effectively capturing the grunge of a genuine 1902 mining town. Warren Beatty was not yet a director when he made McCabe and Mrs. Miller. He was seven years away from making his debut with Heaven Can Wait from 1978. He did, at the time, have a single producing credit, but it was a good one for Bonnie and Clyde from 1967. That said, Beatty was already something of a perfectionist. On one blustery night, Beatty insisted on doing dozens of takes even after Altman had what he needed. Altman finally told Beatty he was going home and left Beatty and the crew to do as many takes as Beatty wanted. According to Altman's assistant, Ann Sedaris, we were there way into the night and the snow was coming through the rafters and we were freezing to death, she said. But in the long run, we were all going for the same thing, a good project. From 1971, also with René Aubergenois, Shelley Duvall, and Keith Carradine making his big screen debut, plus music by Leonard Cohen, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. During the 1950s and 60s, westerns were often shot beautifully in widescreen and technicolor. As you just saw, director Robert Altman took McCabe and Mrs. Miller in a different direction and hired one of the best cinematographers in the business, Vilmo Sigmund, to make it look bad. The whole idea was to make some old, faded pictures, explained Sigmund, who created the film's look with a controversial and risky procedure known as flashing. The unexposed film negative is exposed to a very low light, slightly clouding it before it's used in the shoot. Altman, though, chose not to use that flashing technique for the final scenes to bring a stark clarity to McCabe's demise. Altman and Zygmunt shot the movie largely in sequence on location near Vancouver in Canada, and fortuitously, the snow Altman needed for the final scene showed up right on time. Script and continuity advisor Joan Tewksbury said the snowstorm made the movie. What could have been just another gunfight became an event in the snow. Warren's death in McCabe, sitting in the snow and freezing to death, never would have happened if the snowstorm hadn't occurred, she said. Coming up, the snow is a lot less menacing in a holiday comedy starring Barbara Stanwyck, Dennis Morgan, S.Z. Sakal, and Sidney Greenstreet. Christmas in Connecticut is next on Turner Classic Movies.